the TRC, the reuse company, what you'll be doing in Crystal, our, our OSFC and knowledge management was really great. It was really a pleasure to have you here and present your work again, Jose. So please, okay. the floor is yours. Thanks a lot for this uh, great presentation, this great introduction. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to our OSLCKM. My name is Maria Alvarez. Associate Professor with this university, University Carlos III of Madrid, and also Associate Researcher with Knowledge Management, that is a domain that we have defined in different projects. And uh, the presentation is mainly divided in four big sections. The first one, some introduction, some motivation, then our conceptual approach. Then I'm going to present some scientific experimentation to finally uh, demonstrate the value through some different user stories. So first, some motivation, some rationale for this work, which are the characteristics of these products, safety critical systems. So mainly, very complex systems, a lot of tools, a lot of people working with different backgrounds, different expertise, a lot of suppliers, a lot of engineers. So these are uh, products that are hard to manage. No? So for doing that, we have also standards. We have a lot of technical engineering processes and we have technological support. No? I like very much this slide that was the first time that I was in Nestopom. So I think that this represents what is the, the problem behind the engineering process of such critical system. So we have the engineering environment with a lot of tools, but we have also the corporate environment with more tools, more data, more things to uh, understand and integrate. So finally, which are the needs, some needs that we can detect? Okay, we need to somehow uh, short and, and have a kind of knowledge base in which we have a structure, uh, our information, our data. We have also, or we need also some kind of naming strategy. We need to integrate the data. We should avoid the vendor locking, and we should enable collaboration between the engineers and the corporate staff, why not? And basically to ensure quality, safe cost, and enable team collaboration. So these are one of the, of the needs. So basically, for us, what we have is a problem of reuse. So we, we know that there are some reuse principles, abstraction, selection, customization, and integration, and this is actually, if we want to integrate data and then reuse to provide direct value services, this is what we have to do, how to represent the system artifacts, how to store, how to exchange, and how to consume and expose for doing or delivering services to people. So my question, we can formulate a question, a question with two main sections. Is it possible to improve the degree of reuse of system artifacts in general, or data in general? And can we build something extra with such data, if I am able to compile data from different sources, can I make or can I deploy better services? And this should be done using a camel representation and an interoperable uh, access model. So for doing that, what do we have? OSLC, open services for lifecycle collaboration, different domains with different data sets, basically REST services, HTTP, LinkedIn, and RDF. We have also other ways of exchanging data under some closed wall. Um, in the part of on the engineering domain, we have also in the last years the, the, this trend of model-based systems engineering that is not entirely SML, but in some ways there, there is a lot of models. No? And we have also this standard ISO step that again is to exchange data. No? So we have quite a lot of work around. And we have also some related work on how to uh, we can uh, reduce artifacts using models, using repositories, using libraries, components, ontologies. So we have quite a lot related work. So some preliminary evaluation. Always I'll see any step. It's good to exchange data. We can exchange easily data. We can express what we want to offer to others. But in general, for instance, LinkedIn and RDF is not so good for implementing vertical operations. No? In the case of a step, it's a quite good standard, but it's, let's say, old. 
old-fashioned no? in terms of exchanging data, but the principles behind the step are again in the OSLC. In model-based systems engineering, again, it's a good methodology to proceed uh, to make engineering, but not everything is a model, not every model is a systemal model, and of course, as any standard, we have different interpretations. And in case of uh, reduce, so the previous work were mainly to reduce software components, not models or not other types of artifacts that are generated during the development life cycle. So our proposal, knowledge management, that means to be able to access data, to represent data, to store us the data, and then build something on top of that and deliver added value services for people, in that case, engineers. So why we consider this is a willing strategy, because basically what we want to unify is that you can visualize all your artifacts all together. You have a human interface to access the data, not just Sparkle queries or SQL queries, no, natural language. That is the language that we use to communicate each other. No? We want to automate some tasks, like test case description, chain impact analysis, population of models from, or population of some artifact from some other artifact, so we can make some kind of round trip between two tools, <coughs> generate documentation, because finally it's the, the kind of agreement that we exchange between people. And of course we have to ensure the quality, we have to uh, provide methods for traceability management and language uniformity, you know? that's why we need local varies and ontology. So with a knowledge management strategy we can get some of these services. So how to do that or how to put our approach in the notions of uh, OSLC, knowledge centric systems engineering, that is a, a term or a, yeah, a concept that we coined some years ago and basically it's a kind of repository, a kind of gateway that can get data from any domain and can produce data for any domain. So how we can do that? So basically we have to ensure that we are able to process the meta part, attributes and data, authors, provenance, downloading core, all this stuff, but also the contents. It's not just a reference. A reference is good, but if I want to provide added value their services, I should be able to represent internally which are the relationships within the model. I mean, in OSLC, in most of cases, what you have is like a card with the description, the meta data, and then links to the real model. So in our case, we want to represent also the contents. And in the last couple of years, we realized that, and why not to use the same approach to be able to access and reduce existing operations in third-party tools. Maybe I am building, I am defining models in Papyrus and I want to check the model against the capabilities of IBM Rhapsody. Why not to reduce those functionalities? No? So this is the old-fashioned part of web services. That's all. These are the, the current web services that we, we have with WSDL and, and SOAP protocols. So this is our approach. So how to define, <coughs> according to this conceptual view, how to define a domain, OSLC, knowledge management, so a resource set, we have defined in a, a meta model, a system representation language. We need also an ontology, a domain ontology. We need a repository to store the assets, the real artifacts, and then in OSLC we have the notion of delegated interface, so why not to uh, refactor a bit and say, okay, we have delegated operations. And some of them are interface and others are just functionalities, old fashioned operations. So this is what we have done, and not 100%, uh, I would say, but uh, well, we are, let's say, uh, walking that way. So the system representation language, basically artifacts, relation, relationships, and concepts a very simple model to finally generate some underlying graph with types. Then the domain ontology, how we understand an ontology. 
So it's a layer of different types of knowledge. First, the control vocabulary, then taxonomy and semantic relationships, then building on that control vocabulary and taxonomy patterns, patterns to represent requirements, to represent models, to represent any kind of thing that we want to reduce. And then finally, an extra layer, inference, to check data consistency, to generate new knowledge. So this is our approach. And finally, the domain artifacts, how it works. We have any kind of input artifact. It doesn't matter from which tool, from which format. We generate some transformation rules, and we generate our shape. SRL, System Representation Language, and it's actually a kind of industrial knowledge graph. Now that we want to update the, the naming, it's like that. And once we have that, we can put everything together in the same repository and then build services. Visualization, quality, uh, change impact analysis, test case generation. Why? Because we have all the information inside. But what is important is that we are not the owners of these models or these types of artifacts. So we don't store the real artifact, just a representation. Because the owner is the tool or the engineer, the domain engineer. So this is our approach. We have also uh, a decision tree on how to expose delegated operations. This is part of some uh, research project in which we have uh, done uh, a mapping between Wisdom services to REST services. Yeah. Can I ask you to go one slide back? Yeah. Uh, so this transformation rules, uh, I mean, one of the principles of OSLC is exposing this RESTful interface. Can you go back and on this length data do operations, uh, you know, with food posts and actually talk back to the uh, oh, tools? That's a good question. This is, uh, in general, it's, it's easy to read and to transform, but then to put back the new content is not so easy. So for doing that, we have to create, let's say, mm, APIs or we have to consume the local API of the tool. So it's not so easy. We cannot ensure, I mean, we don't have this way back. It's, it depends on the tool. In some cases it's quite easy, in others it's not so easy. And what is more important is that uh, sometimes the public APIs of the tools are not so good for writing. Are good for read, but not for writing. And you said you will also provide a, uh, the mechanism of dedicated UI. So, mm. so your representation in your in your knowledge graph doesn't have a one-to-one -one, uh, mapping to the to the original artifact, so that you have a link back. Mm -hmm. So, if you have the right dedicated UI, then you could provide this not mm. by your own implementation, but yeah. by by just pointing back to the original object. Uh, and one you one could right, do it. open the right. the. the so, so you, you don't have to provide yeah. the, the, the modification, you can you just provide the access to modification. Uh, exactly, yeah. But sometimes, depending on the on the process that we execute on top of our knowledge graph, maybe it's generating new information. Okay. So that's problematic. For instance, if we have text and we want to populate models, mm -hmm. we are taking text maybe from Excel and generating models in uh, CCML. Okay. And in CCML, depending on the target tool, will change. It's not yeah. the same for Papyrus or Rhapsody or... Sure. Uh, yeah. so, so this what? is something that uh, is still uh, pending, to automate. No, what, mm -hmm. what we, we want is to automate everything. Yeah, what we're asking about this. So are you aiming to do a transformation? I mean, take a whole simulate model and translate it. So it's not... Yeah, may I collaborate? I'm, uh, yeah. My name is Juan and colleague from Chema. Uh, the, the idea of this approach is to convince the tool vendor to provide native OSLC KM support. So it's not that we do anything, it's that this proposal is